Hi, congratulations on the film. Thanks, man. Uh, so, uh, I want to know, as somebody who's also a, a, a writer, when you see a character like this on the page, how does your writer's brain kick in to help you find the character when you're actually when you're able to act? Uh, Tim was pretty collaborative. He was like pretty great at just being like, let's find some more stuff. Um, and he was gracious enough to let me sort of, you know, um, you know, scribble in the margins a little and and um, and improvise. So, you know, we, we would, you know, and then we obviously sort of found elements of the character that weren't necessarily there on the page and, and he let me riff. So it was great. What's a, like a moment where you realize that, oh, this riff is working? I think... Um, it was a couple things, it's just elements of the character that were like he was a people pleaser, um, he was a narcissist, mm -hmm. and that he um, was and he he was trying to encourage a codependent relationship with Lydia. <laughs> I know that's a, maybe sounds like we're overthinking it, but there was a lot of attention paid to wanting to make sure that the relationship felt real, mm -hmm. um, and that it didn't. But it was also funny, you know. So we wanted. To have to make sure that the relationship felt like it could actually exist, you know. Yeah, it's interesting to talk about the, the, the trying to find that element of realism because the characters in Beetlejuice, the living and the dead, are both heightened. There's a, I don't want to say cartoonish; it's not quite cartoonish, but there is a, it exists in a halfway point between a cartoon and, and live action. You talk about how you find that tone uh, as a performer. Yeah, I think it's you know all good comedies played straight pretty much, and you let the words and the situation. Uh, uh, do a lot of the work for you. You know, I mean, uh, Catherine O'Hare is like one of those incredible actresses that, um, you know, um, if you if you took her performance and gave her different words but gave her the same intensity, it could very easily be drama. Um, and um, but I don't know. There's just it's it's people. No, I'm not saying myself, but someone like her or or Willem or or particularly Michael Keaton. You know, they just know how to do it. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's. It's not. It's not broad. Weirdly, it's pretty. Pretty down the middle. Was there a moment like a set like this where there's so many uh, fully built sets and practical creatures and monsters compared to like a lot of films I've seen recently? I was just saying that caught you off guard. We said, "Whoa, this is like something I haven't seen before as an actor." Um, I had never worked. I don't think with puppets, you know, or mm -hmm. animatronics, and that was really fun. Like to be able to work with, like for example, that Beetlejuice baby was. Like an incredible piece of not just art but also machinery and engineering, um, that caught me off guard. Just to how fascinated I was by that, um, and then just all the sort of blood and guts, you know, rubber, latex, and and goo stuff was just fun because when, for example, when he rips open his sweater and that blows all over me and Lydia, it really, you you know, you, it requires very little acting to react to that because it's such a fun gag, you know. Yeah. Michael Keaton, um, in terms of like your relationship on the set, like uh, how much of it is you bouncing around, how much you sticking to script, what, what is the dynamic between you two when you're when you're seeing? It's great, you know. I mean, he, I have such a reverence for that character, like so many people do, but I did not want. It's a weird combination. He's sort of like a firework that goes off when when Tim says action. You don't want to get too close to it because you don't want to like you know block anyone's view from what he's doing but you also have to participate with it so he was just hilarious you know he's a very thoughtful actor you know he's not a um you know you know he really works things out ahead of time and and um and sort of blocks it out in his head so you don't want to the last thing you want to do is sort of like impede the layup you know you want him to be able to do it mm -hmm.